Welcome, geeks, to another New Code Rules. If you watched New Code Rules before, you know that I rant in this segment. But today is going to be extreme ranting. And here's what I'm going to talk about today. I'm convinced that far too many .NET software engineers do not understand how memory management works when it comes to disposable objects. This is a serious issue that all .NET developers must be concerned with. And managers and dev leads, you really, really need to be concerned about this. The issue is that not taking care of disposable issues in memory management can lead to performance issues, really, really big performance issues. If you don't take care of this correctly, the garbage collector has to do a lot more work, which can actually suspend your application for a period of time. .NET has done a lot of work in the last 20 years to make this better, but still, this can happen. But the biggest issue is this will lead to virtual memory leaks. .NET doesn't have memory leaks like in C++. We have virtual memory leaks. And this can lead to services and services, including IIS application pools, just, just stop working and you have to reboot. Whenever I talk to companies and I first see their code base, and I usually see disposable issues, the first question I ask them is, do you have any services or servers on your back end that you have to reboot every once in a while and you have no idea why? Almost 100% of the time they say yes. And my answer is, I know exactly why. And this is the issue. And of course, this can crash desktop and mobile apps too. Virtual memory leaks can just stop any app. The reason I'm ranting really hard this time is because I am tired of fixing these issues in your code. You know, I'd rather be working on features. Do you think I like fixing your code because you don't understand how memory management works in .NET? I'm sick and tired of it. I don't want to do it anymore. But it seems when I'm hired into a team, I'm the only one that really understands. So guess who gets stuck spending sometimes many months just fixing this single issue, me, and I'm tired of it. You know me, I like to give real world examples and I'm about to give you a real world example that you might think I made up, but I didn't. So the solution I'm gonna talk about has a little bit over about 1 million lines of source code. In that source code, I found over 600 places, yes, 600 places where dispose was not being called correctly on disposable types. On top of that, I found 90 classes that did not implement iDisposable when they needed to or did not implement iDisposable properly. And actually, there were some classes that did implement iDisposable, but not a single one did it properly. Just think how long it takes somebody to fix over 90 classes with this issue. But you have to remember that fixing those 90 classes actually caused over 2,000 places in code that I had to fix. So as you can guess, you know, there's almost 3,000 places that has to be fixed, has to be code reviewed, tested, including regression testing, and deployed. Just think how expensive this is. If it was just done right the first time, the expense would be almost nothing. But fixing it years later down the road is horribly expensive and horribly time consuming. I also found some more issues. I found some classes that implemented iDisposable when there was nothing to dispose of. And as usual, once somebody does this incorrectly, and people start copying, pasting code around their solution, which I'm against, but if they do, guess what? This causes many, many more times. I think I found one place that was duplicating the exact same disposable issue like 68 times because someone did it wrong the first time and then copied it all over the place. Either that person did it or somebody else did it. So this, you know, this sense of really, this sets up a really bad example for developers in your team or developers that will be hired in your team. Now, do you understand why I'm frustrated and why I'm really ranting hard this week? 
it's because of this issue. Like I said, I'd much rather be adding features to a program. You know, features is what sells a program. Fixing iDisposable issues doesn't really sell a program. You don't put that in marketing. I hope after this new code rules, you will be frustrated too with this issue. I have yet to look at a code base that took care of 100% of the dispose issues. I'm just very frustrated that .NET's been here for 20 years and these mistakes are still happening over and over again, written by supposedly senior software engineers. If you call yourself a senior software engineer and you don't understand how the memory management works in .NET, you are not a senior software engineer in .NET. And believe me, I wish .NET was one of those languages, if one even exists, that you never even have to worry about memory because the language just takes care of it for you. Maybe there's a language out there like that. I'm not sure. But .NET is not that language, and I don't see that changing anytime soon. So you must go out and learn about exactly how the heap works and how the stack works and how the garbage collector works in .NET. You have to know these things. You have to become an expert. I don't know how to say that any stronger than I'm saying it in this new code rules. So the call to action for this new code rules is the .NET compiler team and the runtime team must figure out a way how to take the developer out of this equation. So I'm calling on the .NET team and I know who you are. Some of you are my friends. I'm calling on the .NET team to take us out of the equation because we don't do it correctly. You have to save us from ourselves. I have no idea how this can be done in .NET. That's really up to the teams. But there must be a way to look at a variable that holds an iDisposable type and look everywhere that variable is used and find out if dispose is being called on it and if not, just add it to the IL code. So will this ever happen in .NET? I have no idea. It's not going to happen in .NET 6. If it does happen, it probably won't be 7 either. So in the meantime, Visual Studio analyzers and other third-party tools must figure out a way to find 100% of disposable issues. I've been dealing with this for 20 years and I have yet to find a tool or an analyzer or FX cop or anything that finds 100% of the issues. Nothing does it. To me, the only way to find all the issues is to run a memory profiler against your running code and then analyze that report. That will find all the issues as long as you do, if you touch everything in your code. Nothing will find 100%. It still boils down to using your eyes. Also, in the meantime, if someone does have a variable, field, whatever, that holds a disposable type, I wish Visual Studio would color that some other color like red or put an icon next to it to alert us like a little trash can icon. I don't know. There, there has to be a way to easily see this in code because developers are not seeing it. I can see it pretty easy because I've been fixing these issues for 20 years. Also, Visual Studio and the compilers must prevent code like this line. The problem with this line of code is the new string reader. String reader is a disposable type in .NET. The problem is when you new it up in a line like this, it doesn't get disposed. And in this code base, I found this all over the place. So to me, code like this should break the build. And Visual Studio and the compilers need to figure out how to do this. So in the meantime, I'm writing three articles. The first one will be out by the time you see this new code rules. And then these articles, I'm going to distill down exactly what you need in as easy terms as I can make it for you to understand. And I'm going to pinpoint the areas and things you really need to look at. Because when I look at a new code base, these are the places I look. And if I see it once in the code, then it's probably all over the code. And I'm going to be stuck <laughs> doing weeks or months of fixing it. I hope you'll check these articles out on C Sharp Corner and my website, donettips.com. So that's it for new code rules for this week. I hope you liked it. I hope I made my point very clear 
especially you people, Visual Studio and the .NET team. I hope I made this very clear to you that we have to fix this. Call me. So let me know what you think. You can email me at rockandcodeworld at csharpcorner.com. And if you want to watch any of the older episodes of New Code Rules, you can go to that URL there. So as soon as you're done watching this, go to your solution at work and start analyzing it for disposable issues. If you have a question, please reach out to me. I will help you as much as I can. But we have to get this fixed, and you have to fix your code while we're waiting for hopefully Microsoft to take developers out of the equation of memory management because we're not doing it correctly after 20 years. See you next time on New Code Rules. <laughs>